Hi, this is Adam from Game Watcher, and this is our preview of Blackguards 2. Drawing from the Dark Eye universe, think European Dungeons and Dragons, Blackguards 2 is Daedalic Entertainment's quick sequel to their decent tactical RPG they released earlier in the year. The first game mixed its dark fantasy setting with a compelling tactical turn-based combat system that, despite a few flaws, made for an experience that was immersive and enjoyable. Blackguards 2 expands on the formula, making the strategic metagame and dynamic campaign far more open than its predecessor, and a little less punishing to play. The build I got to play through contains about 20 to 25 hours worth of content, which is about half the game according to Daedalic, and in a world full of tactical RPGs on PC, I have to admit that I wasn't expecting to find enough to pique my interest. Gladly, I was wrong. Set three years after the first game, the new protagonist is Cassia. Thrown into a dungeon labyrinth to spend four years wandering the catacombs and slowly turning insane, it's a pretty nice introduction, especially for those of us with arachnophobia. But the basic combat situations are just, well, they're just a little bit too basic for my liking, and it feels like the game takes an age to get started. Given that we're promised 50 hours or so in the final game, I wanted to get into the meat of it as quick as possible, and I can see this initial slow pace putting many newcomers off, especially when it's combined with such a heavy tactical and stat-based game. Combat is turn-based, and takes place in the world on a hex-based grid, with the usual array of spells, skills, special skills and moves ready to unlock and use. There are improvements here too, making Blackguards 2 a little easier to play by simplifying character levelling. Direct levelling of talents and skills is now possible, and magic spells now are always casted successfully. Previously, in the first game, an extra roll determined a successful cast. These improvements help you feel more in control of the battle, and less likely to level yourself up wrong and end up with a useless character, as was the case in the original. Being set in the Dark Eye universe, an absolute ton of stats and tiers are present to weigh up upgrades, and which party you want characters to take, it's pretty overwhelming, unless you have experience with this type of RPG, but for those of us who like nothing more than taking character spreadsheets to bed, Blackguards 2 will delight. The biggest improvement from the original comes with a strategic map in the campaign. Here you'll wage war against Marwan, and you'll both be grabbing land, city and more from other factions and each other. Now those territories you claimed will need defending from mercenaries, and the way control of the strategic areas can change makes the campaign feel more, well, alive than the linear focus of that first game. You get to decide what you do next, and the story responds accordingly. How that plays out in the end isn't clear, and whether or not there'll be multiple endings I don't know, but it's the kind of feature that could make this game stand out from the other strategic RPGs out there. The defensive part of the game is a new feature, and will sound tedious on paper. Nobody really likes having to defend cities or land that you've already taken, but the strategic battle that takes place can be compelling and satisfying if your plans pay off. There's also the added threat of having to retake the city, or whenever you've just defended badly, in a much harder battle later if you fail. To be honest, I'm a little on the fence about this, as I haven't experienced enough of these instances to get a good understanding of them. I like the potential of having an ever-changing enemy, always looking to exploit a weakness that you have, as it makes it feel like you're actually waging a real war. But the occasional crushing difficulty of the battles can make it feel like a tiresome chore if you have to defend too many places too many times. In terms of story, Blackguards 2 is knee-deep in the dark, low-fantasy setting common to European RPGs, The Witcher being a prime example. It doesn't have anywhere near that level of focus though, and there's not much here to get overly excited about. However, that seems to work in Blackguards 2's favour, as the strategic machinations of the metagame and the tactical nuances of the combat really just come to the fore. For those who have played the first game, three out of the five heroes return, all having fallen on hard times. Nyarim is now a pot-bellied layabout living off the fame of his previous exploits. Zerberan is now a shackled slave, while Takate oversees a gladiatorial arena, believing to be too mighty of any challenge and border everything else. The protagonist is Cassia, deformed and driven half-mad by the events at the start of the game. She yearns for vengeance and dominion over everything, and this anti-hero quality is present in all of Blackguard's two characters. It's a refreshing change from the do-gooders of many other fantasy games, and it's a key tenet of what makes the Dark Eye universe so interesting to inhabit. Together they form an army to act out Cassia's dream of ruling South Aventuria, even if it is just for one day. Though the first Blackguards game was only out earlier this year, there are enough changes, advancement in design and gameplay tweaks to make this sequel worthy of a look. And after having played so many early access titles that were riddled with bugs and performance issues, it's a real refreshing change to find that Blackguards 2 is a solid experience before it releases next month. If you love challenging tactical RPGs with a dark fantasy bent, then this is one to keep on your radar.
and I'm really impressed with what I've seen so far. 